So here we are, I'm just getting ready to uh, set off on the adventure on Tuesday. And I uh, thought you might be interested in some of the tech that's required. So uh, starting off here with uh, the most important stuff is power. So we don't go through the cigarette lighter. Uh, we go through a special connector and marine plug. Uh, Ray Tebrick uh, has uh, introduced me to this. It's a much more secure connection and it can uh, take a lot more wattage. The inverter is 300 watt. But um, I'm only using uh, 150 watts of that. That's a great idea. You don't want to use things to their absolute maximum. Uh, otherwise, they're going to stress out and die. Kind of like humans, really, hey? Uh, then we've got the uh, power board that plugs into it. Obviously, I won't be using these things at the end. But uh, a bit of a handy thing there, switch. Some wall warts, if required. Over here, tripod. So generally, I'm not using a tripod. But uh, I will be doing some uh, outside the vehicle uh, time lapse as well. You know, I don't want to put the, the vehicle right next to a cliff face or something like that. Uh, uh, so this, or going to a lookout or something, uh, tripod is going to yeah, provide me with that ability. Uh, quick connect, the old quick connect, quick release module for the camera that goes onto that. And uh, now we get on to some interesting cables. Now, these are a bit of a find. They're on the Apple Store. Uh, a Griffin cable. Griffin. Uh, three meter long uh, cables for uh, charging iPads and iP iPods or iPhones and stuff like that. Uh, they've also got a really thick cable to be able to take it. And yeah, they can charge iPads. So all of that's going to let me be able to position the laptop uh, in a really handy position and have uh, you know nice cable runs instead of having everything trying to be squished next to each other because I've you know got short cable length. This one here is a, a three meter USB extension and uh, that goes on to the from the computer to the camera. Now we've got some uh, bunches of cables here. This thing here is a Canon AC to DC adapter for uh, uh, for your digital camera. And what that does is um, through this kind of connector here lets you replace the battery with live power so you know there's no swapping batteries out and fiddling about and all that kind of business it's just constant yeah I've had this modified I, I found um, there's one issue when you turn the car off you don't want to be drawing 150 watts from uh, the, the car battery uh, the camera obviously doesn't take that and the laptop well it's got its own battery so it doesn't really need to be powered by the car all of the time so yeah, I found astronomers online anyway, they've also got the same kind of power issues. Uh, they've also got cooling issues as well. Uh, anyway, I couldn't order one of those online, I didn't have time, so I went to uh, JCAR and spoke to Hunter uh, in town here and he uh, helped me work it out. And so we have modified the, uh, uh, the power packs adapter to, um, with this little special connector so you can only plug it in the right way. And that'll go into uh, here for the AC adapter when the car's running, 150 watts. But when the car stops, or if I was, say, for example, on tripod, there's this handy little device here, which is a DC direct kind of unit. And we've also modified the end of that, or well, Hunter did. And um, <clears throat> so what that enables is that uh, the camera is actually only using 15 watts to itself. And, uh, you know, I increase, like, the potential of the car that I'm using from uh, uh, half an hour for half-life of the battery to five hours for half-life of the battery. You know, I've dropped from 150 watts down to 15. Um, iPad. So the iPad we're going to use for primarily for navigation. And so, you know, bringing up maps on that and things like this. Uh, weather, being able to, you know, look at Facebook or you know, also to have uh, on their PDFs and uh, other things that I can quickly scoot through for, um, uh, you know, national parks and um, uh, other information and things like that. Uh, this device here, well, it's a camera card adapter and uh, don't normally use that. But um, in the remote situation, like where I won't have the laptop or uh, where I'm using the car turned off, I might actually use memory cards. Now, the thing with your memory card you've really got to look out for if you buy one is the speed of it. This, uh, 
This one here is 133 times. I know you can't actually see it, it's a bit fuzzy. And this one's about 100 times. If you find those camera cards which are like 40 times and things like that, uh, uh, I had one from Fujitsu and it's, uh, they're rubbish. Uh, you'll try and shoot and the car's just going to just fail. Uh, in fact, the Fujitsu one crashed all of the time. Very important piece of kit. This is our, uh, our timing device. I can go in from one second and I can go in second increments. There are ones that do split second timing, uh, but uh, I'm actually waiting for an app that won't be available for this trip that will allow me to do that kind of thing uh, out of the headphone port into the camera. Uh, really looking forward to being able to test that software and, and so forth. Here we have the camera, you know, the hero of the situation. Uh, it's a Canon 400D. And, uh, you know, you might be interested, well, why not use like a 5D2 or something like that? Well, there's only one or two benefits in using a 5D2. Uh, one of them is that at night you can shoot a much shorter exposure to still get exposed shots, or, you know, somewhat exposed shots. Uh, and the other benefit is that as you're shooting, that uh, the, the back panel on the 5D2 is, uh, 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 stays on. And so you can see what your exposure settings and things are as you're in motion or as the scene's changing. But outside that, I mean, we're talking about shooting for HD um, or, I mean, and even if I was shooting for film, still frames, they are huge in comparison. The smallest setting on a 400D is double HD. So, you know, yeah, I don't actually need to use a super fancy camera. But for that uh, one, in particular, for that being able to have the back panel on, one day, yeah, uh, I would like to do a 5D2, and I, I have used one, and, and that was a center to see. Uh, that was a benefit there. Um, just a simple lens, you know, I don't actually want like a super wide angle, I don't want a lot of distortion uh, in, in the shots and things like that. That'll just make it even more crazy to look at. Uh, over here, just uh, a simple uh, Canon telephoto, you know, so that's for your if you're on a lookout or something like that, maybe if you know we find some wildlife, uh, we want a time lapse, you know, I can use that. Once again, not something I commonly use, you know, it's going to just create like a very small field of view. Uh, and then over to the computer. Well, it's a MacBook Pro 17 inch, uh, mid 2009 model. Uh, and this particular one I haven't used on such a, on the long one. Uh, my old system died, but that was a, you know, a sad death. Uh, benefit for me in using uh, the 17 inch is that it comes with three USB ports, right? So I've got one for the uh, camera, so it's directly downloading the photos to the computer. I'm not using the card normally. And then instead of having multiple wasteful um, wall warts and things plugged into the inverter, da -da, I've got the iPad and the iPhone that I'm shooting this on uh, charging off the, the laptop. You know, so that's, uh, that's conserving energy. Uh, and so forth. Um, then I've got a hard drive. Now, uh, in last project, uh, last project's actually shot directly to an external hard drive. Uh, there's some issues doing that as well, um, and um, I'm actually going to avoid that this time. Basically, in the evening when I stop, uh, what I'll do is I'll download from the hard drive on the computer to the uh, uh, to the external one. So that's going to be like a, a, a backup, really. And um, but uh, yeah, you get a little few little issues with uh, these tiny connectors, and they wiggle, uh, and that wiggling can cause cause shorts. Uh, you know, especially if the car's in heavy vibration in four-wheel drive, uh, and um, that shorting, boom, there goes your hard drive, and it's all finished. It also takes power. It also takes a USB port. Um, yeah, I didn't have time to uh, get a, uh, a firewire, for example. Uh, yeah, well, that's the power for the uh, laptop. Oh, and over here, personal favourite, we've got some cloth tape, some uh, uh, some gaff, <coughs> and this is to uh, secure everything in the vehicle. Gaff tape, very handy stuff, you know. Anybody should know that stuff. And uh, I found these. Now, these are quite handy, I think, too. The little cable runners, uh, you know, you can see there in the picture. So I'm going to use that to make some neat cable runs in the car. It's important, you know, you've got to realise you are in a car, you know, you do have numerous screens um, that are all kind of there and cables running everywhere, uh, you know, but a car is actually, you know, you need to be really safe in it. You don't want to be 
getting tangled in cables, you don't want the steering wheel getting caught on anything, you don't want the gear stick getting caught on anything. So, you know, if you're going to do this sort of thing in a vehicle, like, and seriously, then, yeah, you need to be really concerned about your safety and, um, and have all of that tied down really well so that uh, you don't get into any kind of problems. Uh, then, uh, yeah, finally using the iPhone, which is here. Now, the iPhone, uh, you know, yeah, I'm just using that for phone calls and, you know, basic things like that, of course. There's a really cool app called GPS for Cam, and uh, what that's going to let me do is uh, it's going to take GPS readings and then uh, I'll be able to take that, uh, well, the file that it creates, it's a QR code, uh, and geocode the photos. Not every one, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to probably set it to every 30 seconds or maybe even a minute. Uh, and so that then, yeah, you've got geocoded photos that you can upload into online photo sharing services and they'll automatically position on the globe. You know, uh, also very handy, okay? So <clears throat> that's the basic uh, kind of configuration. There's one thing missing, uh, or two things missing. One is actually the bracket, uh, the, the camera mount that I'll be using. Uh, uh, thanks, DHL. It, not. <laughs> uh, I, slowly, I really, really hope that it gets here in time. Um, they've, they've kind of really stuffed that up. Uh, and uh, I need that custom engineered. That's uh, also going to be part of the problem. And if not, I've kind of got a random solution which is going to include a lot of double-sided tape, a block of wood, a bolt, and um, yeah, anyhow, I really, fingers crossed, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to have to go that way. Um, uh, and uh, the final thing I said which is missing from this situation, which I've uh, uh, been looking at, is uh, an external, like basically a battery brick, <clears throat> which can take this little fella here. And what that will let me do is uh, take the camera out of the car, whack it on the tripod in a cool location, or walk along uh, with it in my backpack and have live power so I can time lapse uh, remote from the vehicle and um, with still with live power. You know? So uh, I'm, I'm hoping I can get that. Uh, I'll probably need some, you know, but uh, we'll see how we go. That's another story. Uh, final thing is the car. And uh, we'll show you the car when uh, I'm uh, plugging all of this stuff and setting it all up. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoy what's about to come.